Hello, and welcome to this How to Play Aristea tutorial video by Corvus Belly. In Aristea, each player controls a team of four characters, competing in the bloodiest, most exciting spectacle in the human sphere. Throughout five game rounds, players direct their characters' actions to meet the goals of the scenario, earning victory points to win the game. In this video, we will show how this new board game works and how exciting it can be. Setting up your first game. This is our board. We call this place the Hexadome, the ultimate arena of future combat sports. Build your team. Each player controls a team of four characters. Each player has their own tactics deck made up of two tactics for each of their characters plus the 10 standard tactics. Take the eight tactics assigned to your team and shuffle them in with your 10 standard tactics to form your deck. Once your tactics deck is shuffled, draw a starting hand of four tactics. Underdog. To decide which player will begin the game as the underdog, both players add up their character's initiative values. The player with the lowest total starts out as the underdog. From this point on, whenever two characters have tied initiative values, the underdog gets to decide the order of activation or resolution. Roles. In Aristea, you use special dice showing a series of symbols to decide the outcome of your actions. Each symbol has a different in-game meaning. Success. Each of these represents one success on your roll. In an attack, each success inflicts one damage to the target. Block. In a face-to-face -face roll, each of these symbols cancels out one of the opponent's success symbols. Critical success. This is a critical success and cannot be canceled out by a block. Critical block. This critical block cancels out an entire die from the opponent's roll, even if it's showing a critical success. Special. This symbol has no impact on the roll, but might be useful for activating a switch like the other symbols. Switches. Activating switches allows you to spend some of the symbols you rolled to obtain some extra switch effects in return. You can only activate switches immediately after making a roll. Five, playing the game. A game is played throughout five rounds, and each round is divided into a number of phases that always play out in the same order. Phase one, planning. Arrange the order in which your characters will act however you want by placing their initiative cards face down on the running order area of your control panel. During this round, your characters will activate in that order from left to right. Phase two, turns. This is the main phase of the game where you get to activate characters to perform actions and play tactics. There are four turns each round. Each of those turns has an initiative step followed by two activations, one for each player. Both players simultaneously reveal their leftmost initiative card, corresponding to the first turn, and compare their values. The player that controls the character with the highest initiative decides which of those characters activates first. In the first turn of our sample game, the green player reveals Maximus's card, and the orange player reveals Eight Ball's card. Both characters have the same initiative value, so the green player, as the current underdog, chooses who will activate first. Maximus's activation. At the beginning of their activation, the active character gains a pool of as many action points as their energy attribute. You will use these action points to perform that character's actions. By performing move, Maximus spends two of his action points, and he is allowed to move as many spaces as his speed value. Maximus chooses again to move, and places himself inside the scoring zone of the Hexadome. Eight Ball's activation. Like Maximus, Eight Ball gains five action points at the start of his activation, as many as his energy attribute. Eight Ball spends two action points to move, approaching the scoring zone, and putting Maximus inside the range of his Eat My Fa Jing attack. Attacks. Actions with a red background are attacks. These actions deal damage and apply other effects to enemies. To resolve an attack, make a face-to-face -face roll called a combat roll. The attacker uses the dice specified by their attack, and the defender uses the dice pictured in their defense attribute. In our sample round, Eight Ball's roll is an orange and a blue dice, while Maximus's is a green and a blue one, plus an automatic block symbol on top of whatever the dice show. In this case, both players end up having an interesting variety of symbols. Let's see how they use them. Since switches are activated before the attack takes effect, 
Eight Ball spends his special symbol to displace Maximus out of the scoring zone. Both players decide now to apply their results. Maximus spends his block to nullify one of Eight Ball's successes, so he ends up suffering one damage. Eight Ball doesn't have any block to stop Maximus's success and suffers one damage too. Turn two, initiative. This time, it will be Hexer who goes first. Hexer's activation. Since her actions have a limited range, Hexer spends two of her action points to perform the move action and approach her teammate Maximus, so he falls inside the range of her Vade Retro. Actions with a green background are not considered attacks. Once in range, she performs Vade Retro to push Maximus back inside the scoring zone. She rolls for a final result of one success, enough to apply the effect and displace Maximus one space into the scoring zone. Hexer spends another action point and performs the same action again. This time, she rolls enough to activate a switch and still apply Vade Retro's effects. She spends symbols to displace herself one space before Vade Retro displaces Maximus to the center of the scoring zone. Finally, Hexer spends her last action point to perform Vade Retro on Maximus once again. So she displaces Maximus to complicate the opposing team's advance. Miyamoto Mushashi's activation. It's now Mushashi's go. He will attempt to gain access to the scoring zone by removing Maximus from the equation. Since Mushashi's Ken no Sen attack has range 1-1, it can only be used on adjacent enemies. He runs towards Maximus, drawing his blades. The orange player plays a tactic named Take Aim to boost Mushashi's next roll with an extra orange die, and then spends three action points to perform a Ken no Sen attack on Maximus. Tactics. Each player has their own deck of tactic cards. You can play your tactics to gain an edge over your opponent when you need it most. The timing section of the card says when you can play that tactic. Mushashi rolls for an impressive amount of symbols. Miyamoto Mushashi activates his switch to transform his blocks into successes, and Maximus uses his defense to nullify as many impacts as he can. As a result of this attack, Maximus suffers three damage points. Since Mushashi inflicted three damage on Maximus, he may use his Kaze Tachinu automatic skill to displace himself up to three times, enough to enter the scoring zone. Turn three initiative. Players reveal the initiative cards on the third slot of their respective running orders. This time, the orange player decides to go first. Wild Bill's activation. Thanks to his twin pistols attack, Wild Bill can shoot at enemies up to six spaces away from him, so he gets behind Eight Ball to open fire on Hexer. Both Wild Bill and Hexer benefit from cover for their rolls for this attack, and that adds a black die to their rolls. Wild Bill's result beats Hexer's, so Hexer will suffer two damage points. Hexer would survive this damage, so Wild Bill decides to use his automatic skill, Dead Man's Hand, during the switches step of the roll to discard one tactic card in exchange for another success symbol, which will cause the third damage point he needs to put Hexer out of commission. Infirmary. Remove that character from the Hexadome and place them in the infirmary. Each time a character visits the infirmary, the opponent draws one tactic card and takes one frag token. Parvati's activation. Parvati starts off by spending two action points to move. Next, she spends another two action points to move again, hoping to get inside the scoring zone. Disengage. In order to leave a space adjacent to an enemy using a movement, the active character must win a face-to-face -face roll using their agility versus the enemy's brawn. To pass that face-to-face -face roll, the active character must have at least one success after the opponent has used up all their blocks. Parvati tries to disengage from Mushashi using her agility die. She rolls her orange die and gets one success. Mushashi spends his block to nullify Parvati's only success, so she won't be able to disengage and must remain where she was. Turn four, initiative. The fourth slot on the running order is revealed, and this time it's Green's Major Luna versus Orange's Gata. Once again, the Orange player has a higher initiative, but this time they prefer Major Luna to go first. Unlike previous characters, Major Luna won't bother to move. Her called shot attack has a maximum range of eight, so she's content to hold her ground 
and try to take Mushashi down from afar. Her automatic skill, Marksmanship, allows Major Luna to ignore her target's cover, so Mushashi won't be able to benefit from that black die bonus to his defense roll. To further complicate things for Mushashi, Major Luna does have cover and another automatic skill, Veteran Sniper, which allow her to trade the black die bonus from cover for a more threatening orange die. Luna's role is impressive. Mushashi is still able to nullify one whole orange die thanks to his critical block symbol, but he gets damaged anyway. Gata's activation. Gata launches off by spending two action points to move, which gives her five movement points. She uses three of them to move onto a space adjacent to an obstacle, so she can free run off it. Free run is an action with no action point cost, and it allows Gata to spend one of her movement points to gain ground in an unusual way. Effectively, this means she jumps over the obstacle and has one movement point left to move next to Maximus. When Gata spends another two action points to move, she performs free run and places herself on the far side of Maximus, right at the center of the scoring zone. Ordinarily, if Gata wanted to keep moving, she would have to make a disengage roll, but this time she plays a tactic, Swerve, which allows Gata to displace herself one space, bypassing the disengage roll and coming to rest next to Parvati. Using her last action point, Gata performs a misdirection action to dazzle Parvati. She rolls the dice and gets a successful result. Gata spends the needed symbols to activate her switch and displace herself away from Parvati. Since she succeeded, Gata gets to impose the dazzled state on Parvati. This concludes the fourth turn and we move on to the next phase of the round. Phase three, objectives. At this point in the round, players track the completion of their objectives and gain victory points for them. The player with the least victory points becomes the underdog. The scoring zone changes in this step following the rules of the scenario. Phase four, recovery. In this phase, characters in the infirmary move to the bench with a minus two energy state token. Finally, both players draw a tactic card from their decks. Players who earned at least one victory point during this round draw one additional tactic. At the conclusion of this phase, the first round ends and the second one begins with a new planning phase. Please receive our most sincere greetings from Corvus Belly. We recommend that you visit AristeaTheGame.com to know more and follow us on social media to keep up with news and surprises. See you at the Hexadome!